Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ushanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. My name is Sergei Sputnikov and back in 1971 I was born in the USSR. I think this is an American guy pretending to be a Russian. I mean, Sergei Sputnikov? That's like if I changed my name to John Wayne Cheeseburger. In today's video we're going to talk about so-called miracle on ice. Looking at the statistics for my channel, my top geography is United States about 54 percent Canada about 5.5 percent so there's a good chance quite a few of my viewers don't know what Miracle on Ice was and personally I had no idea until I learned from the movie. The Miracle on Ice is the name given to 1980 US versus Soviet Union men's ice hockey game that took place during the medal round of 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid New York. The United States won the game 4-3. So over the years and I'm not kidding over the years I had people periodically asking me the same question, what about Soviet reaction to the Miracle on Ice? So last week I searched my comment section for mentioning Miracle on Ice and the oldest question was from four years ago and I apologize, took a while. Hey, love channel, we're about the same age and I hope you will do a video about 1980 Winter Olympics, specifically the Miracle on Ice. I looked through your videos, I didn't see one. Well, because we didn't have it. Another question also from four years ago. How about serious sports in the USSR? And I have a separate playlist about sports in the Soviet Union. Link will be in the comment section. Like Soviet hockey, wasn't all players military? 1980 Olympic team. And how did the average person in the USSR view the 1980 gold loss? Miracle on ice. Another question from three years ago on my video most popular sports in the Soviet Union. Was the miracle on ice ever discussed? Another one from two years ago from Kevin Ramsey. I just had an idea for a video. What was the Russian perspective of 1980 Olympic hockey semifinal game between the USA and the USSR which is better known as the Miracle on Ice. Well, it's not better known anywhere in the world except the United States. The Soviet team was a juggernaut who were so good they even beat the NHL All-Stars. The Americans were given no chance to beat them and neither was anybody else for that matter. And another one from five months ago. Hello, I was wondering if you're familiar with what Americans called the 1980 the Miracle on Ice and how the USSR dealt with the loss in the media and did the everyday people really care about losing to the US in Olympic hockey? And the latest question on the same topic was from two months ago. Sergey, could you please do a video on Soviet perspective of the so-called Miracle on Ice? This was during the 1980 Olympic Games where the amateur US hockey team beat the heavily favored Soviet juggernaut. I wonder why they use the word juggernaut. Okay, so let's talk about Soviet perspective of the miracle on ice. And since some viewers think that my videos are too long and lack focus, and that this blog certainly pads his videos taking forever to get to the point, I will give you short, quick and straight to the point reply on the Soviet reaction to the miracle on ice. And then if you still want to stick around, We'll continue and we'll discuss detail. So just a quick reminder, this game happened on February 22nd, 1980. So this is the front page of the New York Times from February 23rd, Saturday. US defeats Soviet squad in Olympics hockey by 4 to 3. But what caught my attention, the prime rate is at 16.5%. And now let's take a look at the front page of the main Soviet sports newspaper called Soviet Sport, Sovietsky Sport. Okay, so on the front page of the Soviet newspaper Sovietsky Sport from February 23rd, Saturday, Leonid Brezhnev and his meeting with voters and his speech Nash Kurs Mirna Sazidania Our direction is a peaceful creation. Not a word about miracle on ice. Okay, maybe, just maybe it took a while for the news to cross the ocean and definitely on the front page of the next day, February 24th, we're gonna see something, right? So, in a nutshell, it's all you need to know about Soviet reaction to the miracle on ice. <laughs> so now we're done with short and focused part of my video. 
But if you like long and boring details, please stick around. So this is why it took me forever to get to the topic of the Miracle on Ice. I just had no idea. And of course, you need to remember back in February of 1980, I was only eight years old. So I didn't remember anything, especially since Soviet media completely stonewalled the results of that game. So let me show you another example of this stonewalling. I think that's the correct term. Uh, so this is the Sunday edition to the newspaper Sovietsky Sport. Soviet Sport, it's called Football Hockey, Soccer Hockey. And this is issue number seven from February 17, 1980. It shows the uh, pretty much the start of the Olympics. And uh, we have a Soviet delegation marching wearing four heads, wearing ushankas. And this is the next issue from February 24th. But since it's a Sunday edition, it was prepared middle of the previous week. So they show hockey game between Finland and Soviet Union. And picture below, Soviet hockey players on a walk in Olympic Village. And here's the following issue, number nine from March 2nd. And we are talking about soccer. Not a single word about hockey. Nothing on the front page about losing to United States. So I learned about the Miracle on Ice from 2004 movie Miracle. And it's kind of interesting. When we watched it together with my children, I was rooting for the Soviet team and my kids got so upset with me because you know, it was a tense moment that the game and I was just cheering for every Soviet score and my kids got so mad at me. That was funny. But let's take a look again at that Soviet sport newspaper from February 24, 1980. So that's Sunday. I found the results of the Miracle on Ice on the last page, page number four, right next to the morning exercises, TV programming, and article Mir Gatovica Kigra Moskvia. So the world is preparing to the for the games in Moscow. But before I read you a couple of articles written by Soviet sports journalists describing the hiccup on ice Oh, I apologize, the miracle on ice, let me tell you a joke. I don't think I need to tell you that the Soviet people were probably quite upset when the Soviet hockey team lost to the USA, but they knew and they were quite sarcastic about the way the Soviet media presented every loss, and this is what this joke is about. So during a one-meter race between an American and a Russian athlete, American crossed the finish line first and the Soviet finished second, and of course, the American media presented as expected that the American athlete won and the Russians lost. You know, they never called us Soviets, they called us Russian. And the Soviet newspaper said the following, our athlete did great and he came second. Meanwhile, the American runner barely made it, crossing the finish line right before the last person. <laughs> Okay, now let's take a look at this article. It's titled Pitistal Pakasvabodin. The podium is still free. Our hockey players began the game with the Americans with the feeling of personal superiority, not like they did with Canadians. They entered into the zone. They checked the goalie, Craig, how he's doing today. Checked him for the second time. But Craig even didn't blink an eye and he bounced off a puck after puck and only on minute 18 was an explosion. Just like in a second, it was Americans were defending, and suddenly Baker and Verkota were in the front of Tretiak, it's a Soviet goalie, but fortunately, the puck hit the goalie. And that was a typical episode, because Americans played the game ambush style. They knew that in the open hockey, they won't do really well, so they paid specific attention to defense. Being sure that Craig, the goalie, was doing great, they allowed Soviet hockey players to shoot the puck from a distance as much as they want to. And that showed because the relations between throws was 39 to 16 uh, on the Soviet side. Team USA is a hybrid and quite a viable hybrid of Canadian and European hockey school. Americans pass in the puck just as often and just as good as the strongest European teams. 
and in speed, especially in the starting speed, they're not behind, but actually they are better than many players from the old world. Quite often our defenders couldn't keep up with their sudden movements. But along with all that, uh, players of the Team USA kept the typical Canadian character. Beautiful and, most importantly, unexpected puck throws, great power wrestling, and just fantastic pointing at the goalie. And they don't skate along the sides like our player Baldaris was doing. Still, initially everything was going well. Once again, the youngest player of our team, Krutov, distinguished himself. He changed the direction of the puck after Kasatonov throw and Team USSR was 1-0. And once again, Craig is busy. And once again, Team USA is only in defense. And suddenly another explosion. Snyder is racing along the edge. And as soon as our player Beledinov approaching him, he's throwing a puck. Puck is flying into the top corner and score is 1-1. One one. It looked as if our players will go on the break being ahead in the game because in the minute 18, Makarov after solo run scored. But seconds before the siren, Christian threw the puck from the middle zone. Tritiak deflected the puck and together with defenders Pirvuhin Bileridinov began waiting for the siren. But Johnson wasn't waiting. He raced from the middle zone and the puck went into the net. It happened in less than a second before the end of the first period. So now it's the second period. Mishkin replacing Tritiak, so those are goalies. And for about four minutes, he's just watching the game doing nothing. Maltsev, while a Soviet team had extra player, scores again and the score is 3-2. to two. Hard to believe that this is, will be the last goal of our team. Especially since the game was going according to the previous scenario. Hockey players of the Soviet team spent most of their time in the American team zone. Americans counterattacked quite seldom but extremely dangerously. Needs to be mentioned that Harrington and Snyder with the gaps in about 10-15 seconds twice remained one-on-one -on -one with Mishkin but fortunately, Puck mixed the goal. In the beginning of the third period didn't change much. Craig and the defenders of American team were extremely careful. Meanwhile, our defenders were slowly losing their vigilance. And when Starikal fumbled with the Puck not far from the Mishkin, Johnson made the score even. During the pre-Olympic Games in December, he and Lake Placid Team USA quite often was loose in the first half of the game, but every time in the last 20 minutes, they forced their opposite team to capitulate. They had enough strength and character. Exactly the same thing occurred in this time. And once again, the slowing of the defenders of Team USSR allowed Arizona to score once again. Now it's turn of Team USSR to catch up. Maltsev on the 52nd minute almost even the score. Golikov brothers are pushing Americans all the way to the goalie, but time is flying by, but there's no goal. And as less time remains before the siren, the more chaotic is actions of our hockey players. During those last final minutes, our team saved games that they began quite unsuccessfully against the Finnish and Canadians. But this time, after such a great start, followed not such a great finish. And here's for your viewing pleasure, final results, Itogoe Tablica of the ice hockey competition on 1980 Olympics in Lake Placid. USA gold, Soviet Union silver, Sweden bronze. So here's your answer. Russian perspective on 1980 Olympic hockey semifinal, so-called miracle on ice, was it was ambush on ice. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the story about 1980 ambush on ice, and thank you for watching Shanka Show. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.